All right, guys, so the Biden administration has taken yet another L as the Supreme Court has blocked Biden's COVID-19 vaccine mandate for businesses. And you know what that means. <laughs> Yes, of angry uh, leftists slash Democrats melting down over this, crying and whining and boohooing, right? Apparently, they don't value their own freedom, right? Apparently, they don't value their own freedom. Kind of crazy, right? But I've been reading some comments about this, and people are like, oh, my God, how do we let the minority dictate the majority in this country? They don't care about getting sick and dying from this virus. This is so backwards. I hate Trump. Why do we allow Trump? To win over Hillary, Hillary, if she was in office, this would have happened and Trump could have nominated these three Supreme Court justices. This country is so backwards. We're never going to get through the end of this pandemic. <laughs> right? That's the gist of what they've been saying. Right? That's the gist of what they've been saying, which is hilarious because um, <laughs> Hillary, allegedly, um, is looking to run again. Right? Uh, I talked about this, like, three or four weeks ago, and now all of a sudden the mainstream media is like, oh, yeah, Hillary. Right, and I'm like, bro, I've been on this for a minute. It's been obvious that Hillary was uh, back, but a lot of people are, are looking at this decision from the Supreme Court and how Trump slash McConnell, right, because McConnell was involved in what as well, uh, nominated these three Supreme Court justices, which to them basically shows how bad it was that Hillary lost in 2016. Okay, because if she had not lost, then this court would have been uh, mainly full of liberal justices. Okay. So, I mean, it just goes to show you how important, you know, presidential elections are. And also on top of that, how important these seats are. So, with that being said, yes, we should thank Trump for uh, appointing uh, these judges and, and, and McConnell for clearing the way for this to happen under the Obama administration, which is what he did. Okay. So, with that being said, let's read about this because this is not a capital W. This is a small W as they're still allowing the mandate for healthcare workers and we're going to uh read about why so let's get into it the supreme court on thursday blocked the biden administration from enforcing its sweeping vaccine or test requirements for large private companies but allowed a vaccine mandate to stand for medical facilities that take medicare or medicaid payments the ruling came three days after the Occupational Safety and Health Administration's emergency measure started to take effect. That mandate required that workers at businesses with 100 or more employees must get vaccinated or submit a negative COVID test weekly to enter the workplace. It also required unvaccinated workers to wear in masks indoors at work. Quote, although Congress has undisputably given OSHA the power to regulate occupational dangers it has not given the agency the power to regulate public health more broadly the court wrote in an unsigned opinion requiring the vaccination of 84 million Americans sim selected simply because they work for employers with more than 100 employees certainly falls in the latter category the court wrote all right so this makes perfect sense the reason why is because OSHA uh, has the power to uh, regulate occupational dangers within the workplace, okay? So things like, you know, wearing a hard hat and stuff like that, right? Things you have to wear in order to stay safe, things you have to do in order to stay safe within the workplace. However, this vaccine goes beyond just the workplace, considering how the virus can be spread in the workplace and outside of the workplace, right? So this is not just a workplace thing. This is a broader public health issue. And OSHA doesn't have the authority to regulate that because it has more of an impact than outside of just the workplace, okay? So in my opinion, that, that makes perfect sense. Liberal justices Stephen Breyer, Sonia Sotomayor, and Elena Kagan dissented, writing that the majority has usurped the power of Congress, the president, and OSHA without legal basis. Quote, in the face of a still raging pandemic, the court tells the agency charged with protecting worker safety that it may not be able to do so in all the workplaces needed, they said in their dissent. Quote, as disease and death continue to mount, this court tells the agency that it cannot 
uh, respond in the most effective way possible. Without legal basis, the court usurps a decision that rightfully belongs to others. It undercuts the capacity of the responsible federal officials acting well within their scope of authority to protect American workers from grave danger. They wrote. See, again, the problem with this is that, again, <laughs> it's almost like they don't understand that this is not just about the workplace, right? This is not something limited to just the workplace, okay? This is something that OSHA is requiring employees of these companies to get, even though they might not necessarily be working at this company forever, right? They might not work at this company forever, okay? They might go work for another company or something like that or for another business that is under 100 employees, right? But they're still required to, to get the vaccine because it's one thing to say, hey, you have to wear a hard hat <laughs> Why are you in the workplace? It's another one to say, hey, in order for you to be able to work in the workplace, you have to have uh, this vaccine um, that is going to be with you, whether you're in the workplace or out of the workplace, right? So again, those are two different things. In a separate simultaneously released ruling on the administration's vaccination rules for healthcare workers, a 5-4 majority sided with the Biden administration. Quote, we agree with the government that the Health and Human Services Secretary's rules falls within the authorities that Congress has conferred upon him, said the majority writing that the rule fits neatly within the language of the statute. After all, ensuring that providers take steps to avoid transmitting a dangerous virus to their patients is consistent with the fundamental principle of the medical profession. First, do no harm. The majority opinion read. Mm. You know, that all sounds great. <laughs> Right. Uh, l let's read here again. After all, ensuring that providers take steps to avoid transmitting a dangerous virus to their patients is consistent with the fundamental principle of the medical profession. First, do no harm. There's a one small problem with that <laughs> when it comes to these vaccines. Right. There's one small problem with that. OK, I'll let you guys guess what <laughs> the problem with this argument may be. OK, but we'll move on past that. And so basically this applies to hospitals that take Medicare and Medicaid from the government, which is a whole lot of them. OK, a whole lot of them. And basically what that means is that if you take money from the federal government, uh, the federal government can require that you do anything. OK, that, that's basically what this means. Right. And this is why I'm always weary of universal programs that are run by the government, because if it's run by the government, then the government can coerce you to literally do anything to participate in that program, okay? As long as you receive federal funds, if the government says, hey, <laughs> you know, you got to be vaccinated, then you just got to be vaccinated. That's just kind of what it is. Private business, on the other hand, for the most part, <laughs> they're not receiving, you know, these federal funds uh, like, you know, Medicare, Medicaid or whatever. They're not participating in this government program. Therefore, it might not necessarily apply to them. And again, in order for these hospitals to participate in Medicare and Medicaid, they've essentially always been required to satisfy, you know, a host of conditions related to, you know, safety and effective provision of Medicare. And I think they're just kind of going with the precedent here in regards to the requirements that the government has always set for these hospitals to receive this type of aid. That's just my thoughts. Justice Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Neil Gorsuch, and Amy Coney Barrett, four of the six conservatives on the non-seat bench, dissented, quote, I do not think that the federal government is likely to be able to show that Congress has authorized the unprecedented step of compelling over 10 million healthcare workers to be vaccinated on pain of being fired alito wrote in his dissent a white house spokesman did not immediately respond to cnbc's request for comment on the rulings osha uh which polices workplace safety for the labor department issue the mandates under its emergency powers established by congress osha can shortcut the normal rulemaking process which can take years if the labor secretary determines a new workplace safety standard is necessary uh to protect workers from a great danger so yeah this is a small w Right. Um, and the reason why is because although they block Biden's uh, mandate for large businesses with over 100 employees, uh, they still went through with um, the government being able to require it for healthcare workers that work at hospitals that take Medicare or Medicaid. OK, so I, I guess that technically still is a mandate that's in place there just for certain industries or a certain industry that, you know, takes, you know, government money or participates in this government program. Now. Again, it's also a small W because it doesn't necessarily stop private businesses from requiring uh, a, a vaccine, right? For having a vaccine mandate. 
uh, because that's not covered under the anti-discrimination uh, laws uh, from the federal government. And employers can simply fire people or choose not to hire people based off their vaccination status, at least as of right now. So we're not necessarily out of the woods yet because a lot of these businesses may just decide to just implement a mandate anyways. OK, they may just say, all right, you know what? We don't have to do it under the excuse or the guise that the federal government is requiring us to do it. We're just going to do it anyways, which, again, is its own can of worms. Right. Especially if these companies are liable, if people get sick. Right. If they feel like they might get sued for people getting sick, you know, or whatever. Then, again, they may say, hey, you know what? It's better for our bottom line just to require people to get it. OK, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer here, uh, right? Obviously, this is a good thing. Obviously, you, you know, I think this is a win for freedom, freedom and, right? And, and choice. However, I, I just want people to understand how, uh, that this is just this limited to Biden's mandate through the ocean, right? The federal government mandated a private business, right? It doesn't necessarily stop any private business from doing it themselves, okay? Or even states from mandating it, to be quite honest with you. So, you know, it is what it is, but hey, it is a victory. Biden takes another L, and I think that is something to celebrate, at least for now. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, most importantly, share a black and certain perspective CMS's requirement for healthcare workers to be vaccinated will save the lives lives of patients, as well as the lives of doctors, nurses, and others uh, who work in healthcare settings. It will cover 17 million healthcare workers at 76,000 medical facilities. The Supreme Court upheld it, and we will uh, enforce that. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the Supreme Court's decision on the OSHA mandate essentially means that in, the pan in this pandemic, it is up to individual employers to determine whether their workplaces will be safe for employees and whether their businesses will be safe for consumers. Uh, so President Biden, you'll see this in his statement, uh, will be calling on and will continue to call on businesses to immediately join those, those who have already stepped up, including one third of Fortune 100 companies uh, to institute vaccination requirements to protect their workers, customers and communities. We have to keep working together uh, in order uh, to uh, get this done to save more lives. Um, I would note that there are a couple of um, signs, good signs in terms of uh, without this, um, even, in, even in spite of the ruling that we would point to. One is that 57 percent, according to a Navigator poll of Americans, support vaccine requirements. Uh, according to a Wills Tower Watson's report, a survey of 534 U.S. employers, a majority, 57 percent of respondents, have or will require their employees to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Why? Uh, because nearly uh, because employees want to feel safe in the workplace, uh, because they want to incentivize workers to come back to the workplace, and because they've seen uh, large companies across the country implement this and see how effective it is.